What's up guys, my name is Walter Fernandez and welcome to the channel. Um, it has been a hot minute since I last uploaded a video here and I do apologize but at the same time I did switch camera systems so I needed to take some time to kind of get used to it and see what was going on there and um, make sure I get my information accurate uh, so that I can, you know, I do, I do want to avoid things like misinformations to you and stuff so I needed to make sure that like I got used to the system and I understood whatever was going on there and then you know I can piece my thoughts together a little bit better and then hopefully you might find these things useful for you. So yeah anyways speaking of new camera systems I jumped onto the RF mount with this camera. Y'all might know this camera, this is the Canon RP, probably why most of y'all will be clicking on this video anyways, it's probably in the title. Um, but yeah, it says R here, but we all know it's the RP here. Focus, nice. Yeah, the baby EOS R, or some might call it the mirrorless 60 Mark II. Now I bought this camera a couple months ago and I've been using it on a couple of shoots recently and I did want to kind of give my thoughts on it based on those uh, shoots and also based on my personal workflow. So just a reminder if my workflow uh, does not match with yours, it whatever I say might not apply to you but I do want to provide a personal experience to it so it's kind of like if it works for me, it works for me. If it doesn't work for me, it doesn't work for me. Doesn't mean it's bad or good in any ways. Now, I do love this camera, but I'll also be ending this video with why I decided to not keep this camera. Um, spoiler alert, it's not because it's a bad camera. There's just a couple of things that don't really fit my workflow or, or don't really do enough to kind of like differentiate between the things that I already have. So yeah, anyways, let's get into this. So just a quick like introduction to the kind of stuff that I do. I am a hybrid digital and film shooter and I shoot mainly portraits. And as I mentioned, I've brought this out on a couple of shoots. So I will be referencing how this camera performed on those shoots in my workflow, doing portrait photography and matching it up with film. So for starters, the first thing I want to talk about this camera is the autofocus. And uh, I know a lot of people think that this camera is the autofocus performance is not as good as it could be, especially when you compare it to the other cameras such as the R5, R6, R3, or even the EOS R itself. But for this specific kind of use, like in portrait photography, uh, I felt like the IAF did really well. I even had the subject moving around and I felt that the IAF really just kept up with everything. I didn't really have many issues there. I probably missed a uh, very, very low percentage of shots. Uh, most of it was coming out really nice looking. And um, I was even shooting at night and in the day as well. And I don't think I am dissatisfied with this. This is a really good performance from this camera. I definitely do prefer this style of autofocusing the IAF as opposed to the traditional DSLR style of autofocusing. Uh, I mean, I mean, I know most people do prefer it, but some people do like the DSLR type of autofocusing and I have no problems with that as well because uh, when I'm on my SLR, I use the center point autofocus and this focus recompose and I usually just get pretty good results as well. But uh, IAF is, I, I just need to think a little bit less. I just need to kind of like make sure the box is over the eye and I kind of just trust the camera does its job. I'm shooting on like Sigma 1.4 glass and it always nails the autofocus. So because these cameras can handle it, I don't think there is an issue. Now, one of the biggest complaints about the Canon RP is its dynamic range performance or lack thereof. I'm not going to tell you that they're wrong about it, but I do think that it's blown way out of proportion. Like its performance, I genuinely think is fine. I have been shooting with the R6 for a bit and you do see a bit of difference. Uh, not enough to kind of make a camera like this obsolete. 
R6 itself isn't known for its insane dynamic range or whatever but generally after shooting a camera like the R6 I've never felt like oh uh, like the dynamic range isn't good enough for me to do you know the things I want to do. Generally I think if you shoot like a normal human being and not just overexposed or underexposed like five stops you should generally be fine like don't let that fool you. Canon colors am I right? No for real though like uh, I do feel like the colors coming up from the Canon RP actually tops cameras like the Canon EOS R which I do not like the color on that camera. I do think that it also tops the color from the R6 as well as the R5. I don't know if it's just me but like the straight out of camera look from the RP looks so much more pleasing than the other cameras. I don't know what it is about it but it does look beautiful. Now don't come after me. Of course the other cameras have good color as well. It's just that I do prefer the Canon RP colors a little bit more. Now this is a big one. As of recording this video, this camera is currently the cheapest full frame camera that you can buy on any platform new. I got this camera used for 3400 ringgit which amounts to about 700 USD and it's in like almost new condition, like super pristine condition. However, if you're in the market for a full frame camera but you don't really need the latest and greatest tech, wouldn't say latest and greatest but like the modern tech you're okay with all the tech you just want a uh, good budget and uh, some uh, and, and full frame cameras uh, also if you don't really care about like the, the the modern video capabilities you can kind of like go for cameras like the 5d classic which is the 5d mark 1 as well as the 5d mark 2 both are really good full frame photography cameras um, 5D Classic does not do video and 5D Mark II does do video. So those come in a lot cheaper, they're really really cheap, they're built well and they will probably last you for a long time. But the reason why the Canon RP was a logical choice for me was because firstly I was looking for a mirrorless camera because I did want the uh, ability to be able to adapt my vintage lenses on there and I only have FD lenses at the moment. Um, and the flinch distance for FD lens, uh, the, the FD mount is a little bit smaller than the EF flinch distance, so it's not able to adapt these lenses unless you have an adapter with a correction, which usually doesn't give you really good results anyways. So I resorted to just using mirrorless cameras and then having an adapter which is basically just a spacer. Now, apart from that, it's also the dual pixel autofocus, the IAF, as well as the video capabilities. Now speaking of video capabilities, this topic has got a lot of people kind of just outright hating on this camera. And I guess partially rightfully so. Now let me just start right off the bat. If you're looking for 4K video capabilities in a camera, I would highly recommend you to look elsewhere just because the 4K on this camera has a massive 1.7 times crop, which doesn't really bother me. If you know what you're doing, you can use it to your advantage. But the next thing is it loses its dual pixel autofocus as well as the rolling shutter performance is so crazily jello-y that like it blew my mind. I've never seen rolling shutter like that in my life. However, if you're okay with just having 1080p recording, you're still kind of limited by the fact that you do not have any log options. There's a limited amount of frame rate options that you can have as well. You go up to 50 or 60 frames per second, depending on when you're using PAL or NTSC, but you don't have that high frame rate recording of like the 120 or 100 FPS. Um, not even in 720p, you just have 1080p up to 50, 60, and then you have the 30, 24, 25. You also don't get options like C log, which after using C log, I see why I would use it a lot more. Uh, but from this camera, you're kind of like limited to the 8-bit 420 files internally. Um, externally, you can record 8-bit 422 files on an external recorder, but um, I don't know how much difference the 420 and 422 makes. If you didn't understand anything I said within the last minute or so, you're fine. The 1080p video on this 
camera looks really nice it's amazing the dual pixel af works really well and the images come out really nice as well the images are very pleasing the colors are nice everything looks nice it might not be as sharp as some of the other cameras but i don't think it's something that you would complain about to be honest this camera is small like it's so tiny for a full frame camera now most people even complain about their pinkies hanging off this because it's just not like long enough in this area um, so much so that Canon even made like an extension grip at the bottom here in case like um, you know to, to just keep people's like fingers from like slipping off all the time or, or uncomfortably just dangling at the out uh, dangling outside I am a tiny man with tiny hands so this fits perfectly within my grip everything looks everything feels really really good and yeah i actually like the fact that this camera is so small it just makes it easy to kind of like throw in a bag and when i need to keep it i can keep it in my dry box and it takes up very little space um apart from that it's also really light if i want to take it out on like an everyday walk kind of thing it works pretty well um i do feel like if you have like a lens like a big lens on it it gets really top heavy because of like the way it is and it's also very light uh but first of all problems i love the fact that i have two dials now the fact that i have this dial here and this while at the back it's so nice having uh so much convenience to change your settings on the go without like tapping every single time you want to change something i think that was what sometimes that frustrates me on my canon m100 because i only had one dial and i had to keep pressing every single time I want to change something but on this camera you've got two dials I wish there was three but this is good enough also the dials as well as the buttons they feel really good it feels solid and very premium like I will say however I have found one crucial uh, dial function that I could not map out and um, I'm kind of annoyed by it to be honest like it's just the canon limitation kind of thing like where they don't let you do certain things on certain cameras and for some reason like you cannot map this to iso which really frustrates me because uh i use a bunch of vintage lenses and like you control the apertures for these vintage lenses there they have physical aperture control dials so they're kind of like here and the preference would be when i change to an ef lens i have the adapter there so the preference would be to change that control ring into um into an aperture setting so you know you don't have to keep thinking where's your aperture setting right now is it the front is it the back um yeah so having this become iso would kind of like solve a lot of that problems i think this is an issue only with the canon rp that you can't set the iso to this i think you can set that to other eos r cameras so yeah this one kind of frustrated me a little bit other than that this camera is built well it feels good it's weather sealed the screen looks great the evf looks great very very nice nothing really to complain about uh the hdmi port on this camera and you guys if you guys are still moaning about the micro hdmi on the r6 r5 r3s and all the other new r cameras uh, this is the last mini hdmi uh canon camera so yeah if you want the mini hdmi you can have it on this the camera sports a single uhs 2 SD card slot right here and um, the single card slot is not really a problem for me I don't really care for the dual card slot but it's nice to have a backup also since we're here already uh, the battery that this camera uses is the LPE 17 battery uh, I guess it's a little unfortunate that it doesn't use the LPE 6 NH batteries because those tend to last a little bit longer but i do think that they needed to make some sacrifices to make sure that they keep the weight down on this camera as well so i think that's a good thing um but at the same time after using the lpe 17 battery on like a couple of shoots i think that the battery life is kind of comparable to the r6 and r5 cameras like with the lpe6 battery so maybe they're not as good but it's not like you've got to change the battery every five minutes or so nothing nothing like that 
Now I've said a lot of good things about this camera, but now it's time for me to tell you the not so great things about this camera and why I decided to get rid of it. Now I believe that every camera you buy has to have like a specific purpose or, or it kind of solves a problem that you have. Prior to this I have been shooting on the Canon M100 which is a tiny mirrorless camera that Canon makes the for on the EOS M mount. I'm, I'm just gonna go get it. Hold on. Now this is the camera that I used to shoot on. It's tiny and it really just looks like a point and shoot camera, but it works really well. I really love this camera, especially uh, when I bring it out every day. So uh, when, I, when I was gonna get another camera, it had to serve a couple of purposes. I needed to make sure that it solved a few problems that I had with this camera. Um, firstly, I needed to have a camera that I could go and shoot with and not look like I'm a noob. So a nicer built body that makes you look a little bit more professional would be preferable instead of a one dial camera like this. Uh, I do think that this camera does really well, but you know, it just doesn't look that good when you go to, when you do a, when you do a job with this. So um, yeah, that solved the problem. Uh, but I also had other issues. I wanted to have the dials for like the quick settings changes and stuff but again like i mentioned the fact that this can't be changed into the iso um really just turned it turned me off on it because now i've got to have like a combination of this to this or whatever button i want to set to iso and then change it and um, again first world problems but if i'm spending that much money on something it's gotta solve some problems there now the final nail in the coffin was that i took side by side shots of this camera and this camera this camera shooting with the uh 20 millimeter f2 lens which is a tiny tiny pancake lens from the efm mount i think i think it actually might be canon's tiniest lens ever made um, I might be wrong, I'm probably wrong, uh, but I used that and then on the RP I was using the Sigma 35mm f1.4, the EF mount lens, so that made this camera to be about like this big with that lens on. And um, I was having trouble differentiating <laughs> between the two setups in terms of like things like dynamic range. Um, colors and you know just overall information the image quality i was seeing very similar results that so much so to the fact that i got confused so that was kind of a bummer because this is such a big setup and the results are so comparable to something like this then that makes something like this a lot more tempting to keep as you know some uh, that that just means i'm not solving problem of like upgrading image quality um, so yeah, not much difference on that end. Probably the only big difference you're getting is that slightly more background blur, especially with a f1.4 and a full frame camera. But at the end of the day, you've got to start asking yourself real questions. Am I spending this much money just to get a little bit more background blur? For me, it didn't seem like the right decision. So I decided it doesn't solve that problem for me. So, um, yeah, this is not a camera for me. By the way, my next video is going to be doing the comparison between this and this camera. So yeah, subscribe if you want to see that video uh, or, or just hang around. Uh, it'll be coming in a week or two. That's if you're watching this video right now when it's posted. But if you're watching this video in the future, it might already be out and I will link it in the description below. So yeah, I'll be selling this camera. It's going to be going off really soon and uh, I have my new camera already recording me right now and also another video coming on this camera spoiler it's the Canon R6 absolutely love this camera and I am excited to make a video on this so now if you got this far within this video I just want to say I appreciate you <laughs> I don't know why you're still watching this video after so long but I thank you for staying and um you know subscribe if you want to see more videos like this uh i'm going to be posting a little bit more on the newer systems as well as the eos m systems i still really like this camera and i still like this system a lot um just because of its portability and stuff so yeah 
more content coming on that as well as some vintage lens reviews and also film photography stuff so yeah subscribe if you want to see more videos like that and uh, like this video if you liked it comment down there if you think i should actually just keep this rp um i think i've kind of made up my mind to kind of get rid of it anyways but you know start a conversation with me or something uh you can comment down below i can reach out to my instagram and you know we can have a chat or something if you have any questions about the rp um like that maybe some people do not uh talk about so yeah that's pretty much it goodbye